so we could call the meeting to order unless so this is the meeting of the community preservation committee on december 5th 2018 at 70 something okay. 708 um and we have a thrilling event i believe we actually have a public commenter wow. nice and you're number one on the agenda and okay. the podium's all yours okay our, our ears uh i'm todd weird i'm here with my the hat i have on now is um chair of the uh housing partnership for the fancy and and the reason i'm coming tonight is uh, we had our meeting on monday night and um we had a lot of issues that we were talking about and, and as was, we were discussing them, we thought, you know, we really should invite um, some conversation between our two groups. Um, a lot of times when we're talking, we're coming to you when we want support for projects and kind of trying to sell you on that. Um, but sometimes it might be nice if between funding cycles, um, we could talk through um, some, some mutual challenges. And of course, we all have the one big mutual challenge of there's not as many funds for ever-growing needs and um, it's really hard to make uh, decisions and um, try to prioritize these things so um, so I want to just give you a sense of three issues that have been uh, not only do we talk about them on Monday night but they've kind of been issues that have been stirring for a couple of years that we kicked back and forth and um, so I just want to kind of take maybe three minutes and say these are the three things we're talking about and then invite a time where um, maybe our two groups could meet together either at, we could come to your meeting so you don't have to do another night out um, or you could come to ours if you feel like your agenda is packed or whatever um, so that we could talk further so here's the three things that have been on our mind um, the one issue that comes up often is uh, a lot of our group watches carefully kind of where the percentages are between um, the different parts of the CPC, you know, kind of comparing how much is for conservation, how much is for affordable housing. And of course, when we, when we come to present to you, we always tell you those because um, we track them. And so we people would like to see from our group would like to see the percentage for housing continue to rise as compared to the other groups and we'd like to talk about how that might be possible um, so you know we're, we're a diverse group like you um, we don't necessarily all agree with each other so we have internal discussions too some think that we should have a set aside percentage and if we don't get all that allocation in one year it gets saved for when we come in the next year um, and then we said, well, wait a minute, that could tie hands and maybe that's not a good idea at all. That might complicate things. So, um, so we thought, let's invite you into the conversation. What's a way that we could try to raise that percentage and get it closer to what some of the other, um, uh, where we are in some of the other areas. And again, we realize that it's not a simple thing and we know it's also not, it doesn't show a lack of support for affordable housing. It just means it's a different pipeline than maybe some of the other areas. We're either coming in with a huge project that um, we're asking for lots of money or we're not coming in with anything and it kind of ebbs and flows and it's, it's not simple that we can just make that work um, year to year. Um, second thing that came up um, some of the development groups have noted that when they have to come several times for funding and like maybe they're looking for 500,000 and maybe get 200,000 and then come in for another cycle and get it and maybe even a third cycle if that lengthens out the the time it takes to get the project up it increased costs and um, one estimate that we got is um, if they have to delay a year, it costs 10% more to do the project. And, and if that's true, um, then sometimes we're eating up the amount of money that you're actually giving. And we wouldn't, so, so it's just a thing that we'd like to talk about and see is there a better way to maybe smooth that 
or, or find a way so that um, there may not have to always be multiple times to come in for the funding. Um, the third issue on our mind was concern about some of the projects um, uh, might be short, might really need that extra funding, and we're wondering under what circumstances uh, would you consider bonding for affordable housing? And if it seemed, you know, if, if a project was close enough and that the bonding on behalf of the city would work and make that project work, um, what are the challenges of that and how willing would you all be to um, think about that and pursue that if it would make a difference in the project? So those are kind of the three general topics that um, have been on our minds. And rather than sit around and try to figure it out by ourselves, we thought, well, let's just invite you into that conversation. And again, um, if you would like to set a time um, for us to come and send a delegation to your meeting or join us at our, we, we, have, we have to follow open meeting laws as well. So it's probably best that one of us goes to the other group's meeting um, to have that discussion. But I'll leave you all to think about that and see if that makes sense and when. And I'd also just say, um, we do this with other groups, it's not just you. Um, we're meeting with planning and sustainability um, in our January meeting um, to talk about some mutual issues. And we try to get out to some of the um, affordable housing projects and hold our meetings um, at public housing so we get a different group of people in. So. Um, just like you, we, we really want feedback and communication, and um, so they sent me to just open the door to this conversation. Any comments you want to make? We can't run out yet. Okay. <laughs> Tom, when, yeah. do you, when do you generally meet? We generally meet first Mondays at 5.30. And so our January meeting, um, is already set with planning and sustainability, but none of our other monthly meetings have a, a fixed agenda yet. And I'm sorry, you said it's the first Monday? Or? The first Monday. And again, if it works better for some of us to come to your meeting so that you don't have another night out, we'd be willing to do that as well. Marjorie. Well, we have some. Sir, when do we start our next cycle? Um, we have another meeting. Don't know yet. Oh. That's, that's the agenda. One of the agenda items. The challenge, like, the, the meeting that was supposed to happen today, it got pushed off to next cycle, or? Uh, we don't have it yet. We don't have, we're not having a quite yet, you're right. No. I guess that's on the agenda. <laughs> so. I, 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 plan I, at this point. I would say in concept, I think it's a fantastic idea. I think mm -hmm. I, something we struggle with is, like you said, in your first bit of prioritization. Sure. We're always struggling, I mean, multi-dimensional uh, even but even just focusing on housing I mean we have the set asides and we can talk about if there's a higher appropriate set aside that we should be independently mm -hmm. um, setting on ourselves uh, but even within affordable housing I think we see a huge range of types of projects um, generally it seems like we do prioritize the, the housing projects that come in the door um, I think we've commented that we'd love to see more housing projects, but it's they're hard projects to put together, we understand, sure. so. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think whenever we have these projects where we're doing a tiny piece of a huge project, I think we always struggle with what's the appropriate level of funding mm -hmm. to, you know, to make things work. So any information we can get on that, from my point of view, is great. So. Okay. Sounds good. I, I would add the uh, comment about bonding that we do bond projects um, we're very careful about that because we have money tied up already and and what's going to happen is over in the next several years some of those bonding projects will be completed mm -hmm. and then more opportunities will be there for so we, we've held mm -hmm. off for a while because of some big purchases we made in previous years, and we had to commit to that, that spending that money, but um, that's always on the table for the right project. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. that we're waiting for some historical bonding to mm -hmm. finish its cycle. So, 
So that could definitely happen in the future. And I think we're trying to grow in our level of awareness and information and how that process works. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very easy to say, oh, well, why can't you just bond for the project, right? Um, but, but it's more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why we thought it'd be good to start the discussion now so that it was, it's very hard to talk about these things when there's a definite project and yes. you have to make decisions. Absolutely. You know, we thought, well, let's, let's talk now um, when we don't have something that's um, right before you so that we're not talking specifically about, you know, Valley CDC's project or whatever, um, uh, let's, let's just kind of share some ideas. What do people think about going to the February meeting of the housing partnership? I mean, because I, I don't want it to go too long or we're going to be into another, whenever we start a funding cycle, it's going to start up in sometime March-ish, maybe? We usually have a really brief meeting at the beginning of the cycle, though. We do. There's always mm -hmm. that one meeting where there's not a lot of it. Yeah, it's the yeah, meeting where there's almost nothing on the agenda. Right. If there's a small grant, we might do it there, but we have right. a lot of space. Once we get into reviews, that looks so special. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, I was just thinking that might be held open for Stuart to come at first meeting. We can kick him out the door. <laughs> <laughs> so if it, if it helps you, I can hold open our February meeting until you get a chance maybe to poll everyone from your group and think through your scheduling. Sure, that makes sense. And maybe, you know, fairly soon after the first of the year, we could um, talk about dates again. And, um, but we're, we're not under any pressure to put something on our February agenda right now. So um, I can hold that open and then yeah, you can decide whether you're going to have a meeting and invite us or or come to that one either way would be fine who's, who's going to whose house yeah um i think I, I think having this discussion would be great i do have thoughts about each one of these things which um justify the conclusions i have reached in the past about funding so it obviously would be very good mm -hmm. to put those out and have some uh, other perspectives on them so i can mm -hmm. see what else is possible so i would appreciate who else is on the partnership? Um, we have about a dozen members right now. Um, and, you know, sometimes I know first names and I forget last mm -hmm. names. <laughs> but um, we have Gordon, who's an attorney for um, Tenants' yeah. Rights. Yeah. Um, uh, Richard Abuza, who's a, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're two of the long term ones. Uh, Patrick Broton is our vice chair now. And uh, he's a fairly young guy. He comes to a lot of meetings, so you've made, he's kind of tall and young guy. Um, Becky Lockwood, who um, works in the area of domestic violence, mm -hmm. um, kind of going. Uh, we have a tenant from one of the public housing projects at Marta. Um, three more. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they must not come to all the meetings, right? Or I'd, I'd get all their names. But. Jim Rice. Reese. Reese. Oh yeah, Jim Reese is on for half housing. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, that's that's what I remember right off. It's Kyla Fryer. Oh yes, Julio, Kyla. All this. And oh right, and, and Julio. Julio. Julio also spoke uh, the last the last round funding cycle. He spoke, and that was his first time here. So. It's, it's a good group, and more than half of it's new. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a learning curve for a lot of our group. Um, and we're getting a little bit more diverse and um, things. So um, that's been good for us. It's kind of shaken up our status quo a bit. So. Where are you? Well, I was. I think we looked at the housing plan when we did this, the plan for the mm -hmm. CBA, mm -hmm. which was right when I was so seven. This was three years ago or something. So it looks like you, your plan is from 2011. Are you guys looking at revising the plan or is that something that happens over time? Or, or so so every year we, we take a look at it and make, you know, kind of adjustments. Mm -hmm. um, right now we're spending a lot of time um, 
with the fair housing because we got money from the city to do the fair housing assessment so this year that will probably absorb most of our time and energy um, which is probably a good time to update that plan because um, we've had a lot of new projects that are going to get completed hopefully soon and um, it'll be good to I think the fair housing plan will also give us a lot of background that would be helpful in starting that process. So that's where we are right now. Okay. Anybody else have any other comments they want to make? Okay. Okay. Good. Thanks. Thank you so much for your Thanks. time. Thanks for all of your hard work, and we'll Later. look forward to seeing you in the new year. Okay. Okay. Take care. Mm -hmm. is approval of minutes and I hear a motion for approval of the October 3rd 2018 minutes. Move to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? And any, any opposed? Can I hear a motion to approve the October 17th, 2018 minutes? Chris? What's the first? <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. I don't think there's a chair's report that I'm aware of. Okay. Here's the chair. Um, so I guess we're on to finalizing the funding recommendations and you have the council orders? I do. And I should move. That's pretty boring. So I figured we can get it to work. I just have to have two computers. Just better than me. So I'm just starting it out. I guess it's an alpha. Or do you want me to read these or does everybody want to read them on the screen? It's the best way to do they're not exciting Did we put conditions on any of these? I don't recall that we did. We didn't. Okay. We could. Okay. 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 So uh, actually, the only one was really this one in Florence Field. So CPA funds will only be used as a local match for the right. disability right. screen. Mm -hmm. um, and I the only comment on this is that I thought we were really, I know you said they're more easily able to be enjoyed by every one but maybe emphasizing the um, accessibility features by everyone good. regardless of building. I do have a question about the, the local match for a grant do we need to specify the grant and the time frame of that grant because the way that reads go later on and apply for another grant and come back and say got the grant now we have to give more detail about the grant itself that they've applied for. So to say so that are for a pending Massachusetts Yeah, law. right, right. Sure, and that's why we really clear that to me. should know by the time we meet next round whether that money is coming in or not. I don't know about this one. 
What's a jamboree in the last thing that Brian sent around? But they didn't remember that. I, that's an estimate that the state you just... You never know. They announced and they know. Okay. They've usually announced the land and park by now, but they have not this year. Yeah. Is there anything else before we move down? That's good to me. larger 
areas is important. say 
anything that, about that this is not the full funding, or is that? Are you talking phases? I, I don't know that it matters whether it's in here or not. But. Don't you usually do that in the cover letter? I was wondering this. I same do. Same thing yeah. and I'm remembering that. context. Yeah. Especially because they're giving money also. Yes. For this, right? And I did look into the bonding and other city funding issues. So the city has already bonded for this. It is in hand. And it was just a capital projects funding limitation. That was the most it could be allocated at that point. There, that there, there okay. just isn't any more money to be had given other capital. Needs. Thank you. And that comes from, is there another line about yeah. what, what, where it comes from? Uh, that is from affordable housing. No, from no, the store. There it is. The store. See that. Sarah, on a couple of these, I think on the top line, there's some that are dated 218 and 219. Yeah, I'll, I'll change that. Yeah. Depending on what yeah. we go to city council. I just I left a big space to okay. flag it for me later. Um, one thing that caught my ear in the presentation was that um, my understanding is that these were planned for the most part. Planned for a later phase of the project, but we're part of the initial project design. Yes. And um, I'm, I'm not sure. You're doing very well at wording things, but the concept that this completes the initial project design so that it's not just, well, now we want additional stuff, but that this was envisioned all along. And this is the final phase to, com to complete the project. And this one do we need to, language in there that the grant doesn't come through? Yeah. Okay. That it's not? Yeah. Or would they wait until the grant comes through to actually pass this? Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All in 
favor. All opposed? Uh, did you want to present a financial update then? Sure. Uh, so I set this out in a few different iterations, but the bottom line is that we have $133,321 available for the remainder of the fiscal year. I didn't save it. Oh, yeah. Well, that's right. But um, I put this on the on this drive, and I didn't save it on my computer before I copied it over. So that it's about half and half between the undesignated reserve and the historic reserve. Mm -hmm. It was sixty and sixty-eight. I can't remember which. Yeah, so was sixty in the historic reserve, and then the, the remainder in the undesignated, undesignated funds. Or sixty-four in the historic reserve. And if the part grant does not come through. Then that would be returned. To well, where do we stand on the on the that set aside? Uh, the other two set aside are at zero. So that it would be if, if the park grant does doesn't come through, then that's hundred. Was it hundred? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It would come back. Also, correct. <coughs> and then same also with the accessibility grant that came from. The open space open reserve. Space. So if that was not received, then that would go back into open space. Um, so to, since we have the, I can't keep these straight in my mind. The the um, two hundred thousand dollars. Since we know that that's a go, don't we want to do that from the reserve <coughs> to increase our flexibility? Uh, yes, we can do that. So switch the um, the yeah. Burt's Bog Trail, yeah. so that if, if the funding does come back, it'll go into to the undesignated fund. Exactly. Okay. You can do that. Nice call. It's ironic, given how tight it's felt that we could be sitting on two hundred thousand dollars possibly in January. This seems amazing. Be wonderful. I mean, in a way. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I would rather be sitting on half a million having funded everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> Four on zero. Right. right. I'll let you. Okay. Um, I will do that before I take these accounts. Okay. Although this isn't updated, is there, are, are there any other questions or concerns about finances? We'll just look at the, would you mind just going over the bonding capacity and bonding obligations again, because I never keep it in my brain and since Todd raised it. So that we are, we have bonding obligations through FY27, although they're significantly reduced in FY22. And um, Todd had asked about bonding. It's somewhat challenging to bond for someone else's construction project. So that would be a challenge to bonding an affordable housing project. So it would more likely be a scenario where the committee would bond something else in order to in order facilitate to the right. affordable housing project. Mm -hmm. okay. We had that conversation last time. Yeah. It, it places unnecessary constraints on, um, on the receipt of the, the on the whoever's receiving the bonded funds and it's challenging for the city also. Are, are you seeing a change in the borrowing rate? I imagine that's gone up somewhat. Yes. Uh, we haven't bonded anything really recently, but I, I think it's a projected to be about 4% now. Still pretty good. So you're saying someone else's project, what you mean, you're saying is that it's only, it's best for only really possible to bond city-owned property. Yes. Projects. Yeah. Like so park and the farms. Um, yeah. So um, Forbes had had been bonded for before. Yeah. Um, and Florence Fields and Pulaski Park. Yeah. But to to take out bonding to finance a nonprofit's construction yes. project would be challenging. Um. Okay. 
And the other thing, if you wouldn't mind looking at, is those percentages um, you know, by category, the category under the category allocation. So this has not been updated to account for this round, mm -hmm. right? Um, because they haven't been approved by council yet. But yeah. affordable housing is currently at 19.3. And, and I looked at this. If you just look at the past five years, um, affordable housing is at like 24. If you could scroll, and I, you, when you do that, you take into account all the all the money so that the the payments towards the bonds are counted as open space recreation. Yes. So it's a different percentage if you look at the amount that we're, we have available to actually allocate a fresh. Yeah. So yeah, that's correct. And if you consider that, uh, I mean, yeah, but if, we, if we want to start this discussion about the merits of housing versus mm -hmm. other things, that's fine. Um, I'm reluctant to do so. I'd rather hear more about it because I have some very strong feelings about all the points that you raised. Oh, I do. But I wasn't. No, I, yeah, I agree. Okay. I was not. I was just trying to understand the numbers here okay. so that I could think about it some more. I agree. I was not. Yeah, maybe ahead that. sometime in the next few months, in all your spare time, <laughs> we could we could draw out the what would you call it, disposable income portion of how how that money has been allocated. Basically, so just bonding off the table. Remove the bonding from that. If we just looked at it without bonding over the past. Could you scroll though? I'm not sure that that's because I thought last time it. Not, um, I'm not sorry. The other one sideways. To the oh, right. side. So the show because it showed other fiscal years. Yeah, it shows all. Right. So. Yeah. So it, it fluctuates. So when you look at widely, hold on a second. When you look at, so I'm not sure that's the way. Now that I look at it. FY18 looks like that's calculated based on what we, we as a committee allocated You're right. during those meetings. It doesn't include the bonding. It does not include the bonding. The bonding was, would be accounted for in the initial fiscal year. The initial fiscal year. Yes, because the, when we, so Florence Field would be in, so that's, w whenever oh, right. the committee made that recommendation. So you look at okay. 15, it has two and a half million dollars in there. Yeah, so that's so it's whenever the committee decided to. So the total is still right. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, so it's already been done then. Uh, yeah, sorry, I misunderstood your question. Okay. Well, I, yeah. Okay, that's helpful. And one argument that we do hear from people who are concerned about affordable housing spending is that open space and recreation are essentially one category. Right. So that bring yeah. that brings those two up much, yeah. much higher. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any questions about the financials? Anything else you want to tell us about? I don't think so. There's a I mean, there's a lot there and there's a lot of different ways to look at it. So if yeah. anything would ever be helpful, charts or graphs or anything. Okay, so you want to talk to us about the 2019 meeting schedule? So, generally, have eligibility sheets due first or second week of January, have one wrap up meeting sometime during January, sometimes, not always, uh, and then jump into the funding round at the end of January, beginning of February. We've never had this little funding available for a funding cycle. So I, I could put together a similar looking schedule for next round, or we could we could compress things. I don't know. What's the pleasure of the committee? Um, in the previous round, I know that because of um, you know, small pot of money, you encouraged people to get in early um, and not wait around for the second round. Was that was that pretty much the message that you sent out going, coming into this round? This year, I don't know of any projects at all. So you, you're not expecting, I mean, somebody's gonna figure out that there's 130,000 out there and it may be one of the people that was in the room a month ago. 
um, and come back. But as far as you know, there's nothing big in the offing. Uh, the only thing actually that I know of is a potential National Register nomination. And Wayne may have a, uh, an acquisition, but I'm not entirely sure that no one does. I thought, I thought you didn't know, weren't aware of things for the small pot of money we had in round two last time, and then there were a bunch. Yeah, I mean, sometimes people will sort of send out feelers, and then sometimes I'm aware of things that have been in the pipeline for a long time, but this year I, I just don't have a sense of what I can just. Well, there's a, I thought there would have been some flexibility in our schedules before, so that we would have one or two sessions depending on what we needed, so it makes sense to me, I think, to do the, the small grants um, and then here have a session from applicants and then a session for public, for, for uh, decision making. Okay, so stick with the same type of round that we've always had. Okay. Yeah, we try to invite, I'd like to invite them to our meeting if we can rather than adding. I agree. Adding. I'm trying to go to. Yeah. yeah. You're the chair, so. No. <laughs> so on that subject, only only for another ten minutes. I like oh. to be heard. I'd like to be heard on that subject. Yeah. Um. It, it strikes me that um, there may be other groups whom we want to extend that same courtesy, um, and I certainly don't want to limit. I just don't know who they are, and I don't want to limit our us to just um, the housing constituency. Um, it struck me as we were talking that it would be helpful to me, for instance, to have a better understanding of what capital improvements does on an annual basis, how their allocations are set out. Um, I, I served on that for one year, and that is, um, it's, it's amazing how much money gets reviewed at that, at that um, through, through that commission, which only meets very briefly and does a, does a quick review of all of the department's requirements, but it's a lot of money. And um, it'd be useful for me, I think, if we're gonna start reaching out to other people and get a feel for where they're going, to have a better understanding of the long-term capital improvements plans for, for, the, com for the community are and, and where, the, where they may be coming to us, that type of thing. And I don't know that that's possible, just meeting committee to committee, it may be because it's all the agencies that, that make up that that discussion. Um, that's better to do that. I just um, I want to be sure that everybody who's who has an interest in receiving grants from from this from this committee has the same opportunity to present their case to us that, that the housing people do. Uh, I mean, any of them can come to public comment and do. This I understand that. In some groups, conservation. Parks and Rec historic. Have someone sitting at the table. Right. Okay. Is there over? I'm sorry, maybe I don't understand. Is there overlap between that capital improvement budget and what we? No, it just on? struck me that I mean, for instance, you know, when 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 Sarah was saying that um, uh, the reason that uh, Forbes. Forbes didn't bond more was because that was the limit that capital improvements could do. Oh, sure. Okay, so you know. So there is overlap. So, yeah, that so, yeah. is an example of yeah. overlap. Yeah. So the city does have a, a capital improvement program, as all well-planned cities should, and the CPA funding is specifically listed in that. Um, so it's, it's pretty limited, but it's the CPA funds can be the source of funding for some capital items. The CPA has funded improvements to Forbes Library, renovations of city buildings and assets, and the acquisition of new playing fields. CPA funding is recommended by the CPA committee to the City Council through a separate process and therefore while not officially part of the City Capital Improvement Program, departments are often referred to seek CPA funding when the project fits CPA criteria. I would imagine that it's, although it's not official, when the Capital Improvements Committee is looking at things that are proposed for capital improvement funding, um, things that are likely to get CPA funding are probably not prioritized as much as things that just can't. Right. Well, see, but there's a difference between can't and might not. Yeah. Uh, our mandate says that we're not supposed to fund certain things that are considered to be normal, normal city function. Fire and if, stations. Uh, huh? Fire stations. Yeah. Stations. Yeah. 
So if, if capital improvements is saying, maybe you want to go look somewhere else so that we don't have to do it. If they're saying, maybe you go look somewhere else because we can't do this, that's one thing. If they're saying, maybe you should go look somewhere else because we don't want to do this. I'm not sure how that fits into our mandate. It's picky. It's picky. I get it. I get it. I think it would come up if they want, if someone asks for money for like improvements to like city affordable housing projects mm -hmm. or something that seems like, I mean, that seems like the group that would be able to tell us something like that possibly. Right. I just don't see, the, I don't see the reason to go and ask every constituency who might ever apply for money here to, before we schedule a meeting with somebody who come, who's going to ask. Uh, no, I, I get that. I'm just wondering if there are other groups out there that we might want to have, you know, right. make that, make that, I mean, you know, Todd and, 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 you know, the housing authority are here often. They know us, they get it. And, and they, you know, they, they come to us with really good proposals, but even within that area of funding, they don't represent the totality of the universe. You know, we get, we get grant proposals from people who it sounds to me, don't participate in that, in that entity on a regular basis. You're saying, yeah, well, you're, so you're saying, I, that was going to be one of my questions, so um, there may be a, affordable housing projects that are developed um, where the entity that's developing them doesn't go to the housing. Right. You know, yeah, and I don't know anything about that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know anything that's about that. Because I know this, the preservation, usually the preservation projects do get reviewed by the historical commission. Yeah, yeah. and there is a requirement in the CPA plan that affordable housing proponents to seek support from the housing partnership. Okay. Did the sergeant, the sergeant house, can, they, did they review that before yes. we got it? Yeah. So I'm wondering if that's part of what's storing their desire to have a, a meeting? I think so. Uh, oh, it, yeah. it may, well, I, I think the most recent impetus would probably be the partial funding for Village Hill oh, so. and their recognition that there is an actual funding out there. Did the dial self come through the housing partnership? Uh, it, I mean, it didn't come through them. I, yeah. I know the housing partnership was involved with both organizations that were involved in that project. Mm -hmm. that, no, the Dallas office, that's right. That's what I was thinking. Right. That's an awesome. emergency thing. And yeah. the, the open space integration is mostly coming from the city because it's city property, mm -hmm. correct? Right. Or it's anticipated or uh, desired city property because it's being acquired. So that's different. I mean, it may be that this is an artificial bump for me that uh, that I'm going to work my way through. I just, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I just like the idea that since we're spending taxpayers' money, that all the taxpayers have an opportunity to make their case in a, in a, in a timely manner. And the fact, the fact that we have an open forum and an open thing, doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's going to avail themselves of it because they're just not as knowledgeable as some of the people who come up here asking us for money. I, I think we, we we have to be realistic about how much we can yeah, light yeah. off. Mm -hmm. um, they're coming to us because they want to change something. They're right. not happy, and they want us to change our our. I mean, they want information, but they also really appreciate it if we change the, the percentage. I um, think there's also allocation our, our and our that just like, I think that's a little. I, I share your desire to know more about what the other funding possibilities are for all of the projects that come in here. How much do you really need this? How, what ha is there any other source you can go to? Because it is hard to decide where to allocate. But I think that's a different question, really, than giving somebody the opportunity to come in and sort of advocate and inform us about their piece yeah. of No, I, I agree. I, and I think we can maybe be more forceful in asking those questions. I think some of those questions were asked this last time about, you know, what we always are, are asking, well, what happens if you don't get this funding? But we haven't asked, but have started to ask is where else could you go to get this funding? And maybe we just have to uh, work that into part of the questioning that we do so that we feel we really know, are we sort of the easy ask or are we the necessary ask? Right. I think is what, yeah. what you're trying to get at. Exactly. Well, and I also think that um, if the housing partnership is reviewing these before they come to us, they should be advising the applicants that way as well, because I know the historical commission does. You know, you're going to be asked if there are matching funds that you're going after, or do you have matching funds in hand, or can this be phased? So we put that out there for them, or we check it. Mm -hmm. So they've thought about that. 
and, and know that it might jeopardize their application if they have it. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like there's also an awareness out there from these groups that our funding source is shrinking, that they want to know more how to compete for the existing money because the pot is shrinking every year. And that might be motivating some of this, knowing that we're not as flush with money as we have been in the past. So I'm just representing the Housing Authority. So is there no overlap between what that group does and what the partnership does? Mm -hmm. Not really. No, okay. The CPC is mandated by state law to have a representative from the housing okay. authority, but not from the housing partnership. But it's okay. in Northampton, it's really the partnership that serves that advocacy role. And the authority just oversees its buildings. But not every town has something with the partnership. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Any other discussion on this? So um, I think we were starting at the point of you wanted to invite them to say, <laughs> <laughs> if I recall correctly, the uh, that was it the first of the January meeting. So we we could meet in January. We have if we are planning on inviting the housing partnership, uh, we could do that. We also have a meeting with the Community Preservation Coalition. They could potentially be done at the same meeting. Uh, the co the representative from the coalition is indicating. 45 minutes. So that doing both might not be too onerous a meeting. So do you to me. And will that be done after the uh, letters of intent to apply and come in? It depends on how we want to schedule that. And last year we had them do the second week of January. We could we could stick with that. I mean, it um, seems like it would make sense <coughs> to do it after that so we know at that meeting what we're kind of up against. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I think. Yeah. 
Okay, does anybody, would anybody love to be vice chair? You've done an admirable job. You've been amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. If we, okay, if we, if we, I won't nominate Michael. I nominate Linda Morley. I'll, I'll second. Nice with the caveat care. that she not be asked, not be asked to step right. up. Right, thank you. This is not what you're talking about. We remember that from last time. <laughs> Any uh, discussion? All in favor? Yeah, you're in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Unless there's any other business. I was just curious. Yeah, I was just curious. I, 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 I don't know if I misheard or didn't hear, but um, why did the coalition guys not come? Guy come, uh, not come tonight? Too many people from our community couldn't be here, and it didn't work out that well for him okay. either. He had a unwellness in his family. Okay. Okay. okay, now can I hear a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. She's I'm asking. waiting for a second. Oh, oh second. Oh, she can't do it. I thought you said second. No, 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 she's the chair. She can't and I forgot the question. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay.